Okay. This is the Bart Parker blade and knife. This is the Bart Parker handle, and these blades are detachable blades. It's supposed to be detachable. I don't know whether this is detachable or not. Here, this is size 10. It ranges in size. There are different different grades for it. 10, 11, 12, 15, 21, 22, 23. 22, 23 are very big ones, which we use for cutting the abdomen and things like that. And usually for small suturings and for small incisions and all, we usually use 10. The 11 one is slightly smaller. The 12 one is curved like that for opening abscesses. That's why it is also referred to as a bisturi blade. So this is size 10. After you have used it, you can remove it and expose it off and this can be sterilized and we can put another blade on it. So this is the handle which is recycled, the blades are disposed of. Okay, so now first I'm going to show you how to make a simple incision. And after that I'm going to show you the simple interrupted suturing technique. When you make an incision, hold the Bart Parker needle in the handle like you're holding a pen. Not like you're clay killing somebody, <laughs> like in a B-grade Hollywood or a Bollywood movie, <laughs> or not like a mafia, <laughs> but we hold it like a pen. Suppose this is the place where we want to make the incision. Exactly the angle of the this thing to the skin should be 45 degrees. Go first straight in, and then bring it to 45 degrees, and you have to have a steady hand for this. No essential tremors. Go straight across. Give us a little traction on the, with your other hand. And with a gentle pressure, continue right down. I made the skin incision. And you can see this is exactly the texture of a skin. And you can see this is how the skin separates off. So we have made a skin incision. Now what I'm going to demonstrate to you is how to switch the skin incision. Today we are going to do the simplest technique. <coughs> the <coughs> continuous suturing technique, the one which is shown here. So, as usual, this is the thumb forcep. We are holding it in our left hand and I'm holding the needle holder in my right hand and I'm I've kept it here, okay? So I start by holding, picking up one end. One bite. Pick up the other side, take the next bite. Make sure the tip comes out. Then you give it a little more push from the other side so that you get good, and then you bring it out. Give a slight curving motion. Many people try to pull it out straight. That's the wrong technique because the needle is curved, so you have to give it a slight twisting motion so that it just follows the curve of the needle. And then with the other hand, hold it and keep on pulling, keep on pulling. Make sure that this end is sufficiently small. If you do it here like this, then so much is wasted. Believe me, the operating nurse is going to jump at you. And she is going to say, Doctor, you are wasting my suture material. <laughs> they will tell you that. So make sure it is of sufficient this much. First one should be tied off. So I take to double. Let me do it again slowly for you. Two loops. Open it, pick up the tip, and remember this is nylon. Nylon tends to slip. Can you see it is slipping repeatedly? So therefore we have to take multiple throws to make sure that it does not slip at least six throws. So each time you loop it twice, that is equal to a double knot. So two this way, two the other way, and then two this way. That will make it six. So now I made my sixth one. Will everybody follow me? Then your assistant, you just pull it, pull it up and give it to him. The assistant will hold it here with a hemostat and pull it away from your field of view. And then the person will give a slight counter-traction with this one. So here, can I have somebody give me a slight counter-traction here? This one? Yeah. Yeah, you have to give a counter-traction. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to now continue doing suturing, continue suturing like this. Again, one centimeter away, another bite. 
same. Leave, please. Okay, hold. Make sure the traction is always maintained. So that, otherwise the knot tends to be, the suture line becomes, tends to become loose, you know. Approximately one centimeter away, one and one. Don't leave it early. Only when I take it, then you leave it. See? So when you take multiple, it should all come obliquely like this. Now you hold again. Yes. Next again I do, one end here, there you go, So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to close it off so that you've all seen the procedure. This is a no, no, don't. So that this is the technique for continuous non-locking suturing. If you've done a good job, it should look more or less aesthetically nice also. It should look more or less parallel to each other. And this is going to be my last and I'm going to show you how to finish it off. Suppose the suture line was only this long, how to close it off. And I'll show you just now. After you've taken the, suppose you've decided to stop it here, what I'll do is, once I've taken this, I'm going to leave a little bit of loop here like this. And then I'm going to take a double, and I'm going to catch hold of the middle of the loop. Did you see how I made the knot? Then again, now I'm going to do the reverse. Make sure the knot is always on one side. It should not be on the suture line. That will give a, a painful scar. I'm just putting multiple throws because from my experience I've seen that nylon tends to slip. So therefore, I always prefer to. And then finally, once you're done, you just cut it off. So this is continuous non-locking sutures in this game. So now you can take your respective stations and you can remove the previous sutures and you can start doing it. You need not make the incision. This incision is already made for you. So this is the technique you do. Just practice with that.